Well, hello, and happy Friday. Doesn't Friday come around so quickly? So, another Geospatial Next talk. I'm gonna drill down into Geospatial Next over the next few weeks. I'm really gonna build out a series of um, conversations focused on some of the nuts and bolts of Geospatial Next. And I'm hoping I can actually bring some guests in just to tackle some of the, some of the areas that uh, are most interesting in this evolution of, uh, this, uh, of our geospatial world. Um, the title of this talk is Why Geospatial Next is So Critical to You and Your Customers. And that will lead in to, like I've said, a series of other conversations. Before we dive deeper, I just wanted to make a quick disclaimer that anything that I'm going to say in this or future talks have no relationship to anyone I've been employed by or am employed by. These are all sort of my macro level views of the world of geospatial and they're really very much based around the conversations I've had with industry leaders and mostly around my experiences when I ran web map solutions. So I just wanted to make sure that was a, that was clear from this content. Okay, onwards. So to begin with, geospatial next, the why, the what and the how. Anyone that knows Simon Sinek will know that these are the core components of what he talks about. If you haven't seen his TED talk from many, many years ago, very well worth watching. I think he's an excellent speaker and there's some great ideas. So let's start with the, the why of Geospatial Next. I'm using a telephone there and some people looking at this probably go, what's that thing at the top? Yep, that's how we used to make telephone calls with a wire and you'd walk around the house, these extended wires. And then all of a sudden smartphones appeared in 2009, 2008, and that world changed. And I'm simplifying this because we know that uh, we're at, we've now got many computers in our, in our pockets. So it's not just a communication medium. But what the smartphone brought to us was disruption. And that's exactly what Geospatial Next is focused on in this geospatial world. We're in a period of disruption. So the what? And I generally point at three things, but we could go a lot wider than this. We started to see multidimensional data appear. We're collecting it um, through, through, the, through new sensors. So we're collecting three-dimensional data. Uh, we're collecting four-dimensional real-time data. Um, we're processing that data with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, so we're in this phase of automation. We're no longer in a world where processes are done and data is collected um, in a manual way. It's this whole world of automation, and that's really where we are currently, and, and that's what's kind of driving, in, in large part, this whole geospatial next world. So, the how. And I've got a question mark here. This is exactly what I'm going to be exploring over the next little while. It's really around adoption. When we've got disruptive technology, in this case, sort of the automation data collection process and generation and analysis of that uh, data, um, how do we actually improve, speed up adoption of that technology? That's going to be, again, the, the core of what I'll be talking about over the next little while. So, customers. I'm going to just take a quick perspective on the, geosp the traditional geospatial industry. I think that we're in a period of convergence. That's what that arrow is about. So we're not just talking about GIS here. We're talking about remote sensing. We're talking about uh, the engineering world. We talk, we've got this world of convergence that's happening within the tra traditional space. So we, we're beginning to see Esri uh, have bring BIM into, into their technology and pop partner with other big, 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 big organizations. So there is a journey that the traditional geospatial um, industry is taking to bring solutions to customers. And, and like I said, this is in the traditional space. There's also the emerging space of geospatial, and that's startups and bigger. So there's a whole world of innovation that's happening in, in sort of the non-traditional world, I would call it. Um, and in some ways, they're sort of happening separately. I mean, I, I, I applaud the OGC for them kind of looking at how we bring these worlds together. But um, we've really kind of got these two worlds that uh, have appeared. The, the emerging guys... Uh, are chasing clients, they've got new ideas, they're bringing new, new things to customers. The traditional guys have got their existing customers and they're, they're moving forward with those customers. I think what's key to Geospatial Next that I've realized over the years is synergy between those two groups will lead to faster adoption. 
I believe if we've got these smaller innovative companies that are pushing the boundaries of data collection and the technology to, to analyze and use that data, um, bringing that into the traditional world, which have got customers um, that are in sort of traditional spaces, that will speed up adoption. So I, I, I've really been focused around thinking on, on in, that, in those terms. So why is this so important? And I think this is something that I'm, I have lots, I've had lots of conversations around this, particularly over the, over the last few years. But my belief is, and what I'm hearing and seeing is, your customers are, and potential customers are now paying attention to what we're talking about in this geospatial next universe. What does that actually mean to you as a company or an organization? Well, it means business expansion. If you start bringing some of these new techniques, these new ways to solve, solve problems, that means you know, that sort of nirvana of business expansion is a reality. It also means revenue growth as well. And that can be potentially very big revenue growth for those that, that sort of do this properly and right. And I would also argue that um, it gives you a competitive edge. If you're, on a, if you're competing with a, an organization um, and you have similar, similar capabilities, your spatial next capabilities gives you that extra edge to win. So I think there's three key pieces as to why, um, to you as a, as, an, as a company, for example, why this is really, really important. What do you mean to your customers? I think the, the critical thing here is it's solving tough problems. I mean, I think the world of, um, I remember the world of widget selling where salesmen went out and sold widgets and, you know, fixes and point solutions and all that world that we still inhabit to some degree. But I think really what customers want are solutions to problems. And, the, and a, lot, a lot of times these are tough problems, but we can now tackle the simplest to the most complex problems um, with the technology that's now in place. So it opens up a whole world of new possibilities, focus around problems, as we've said. And I believe it potentially transforms their business. And again, you can look back in time and you can see when the internet first appeared, there was resistance. The, the, uh, consumers were the first adopters of the internet. There was resistance from businesses and it's transformed businesses with its arrival and adoption. Mobile is exactly the same again, very, very consumer adoption, but mobile is transformed and has transformed business and spawned all sorts of technologies now that sort of are attached to that world. So this is transformational for your customers. So the approach. I use this a lot, and I've quite a few people I'm surprised have never heard of this. This was a an English monk actually in the I think the 1300s, 12, 1200s. Uh, and he came up with this idea of there's this term Occam's razor. And, and in simple terms, it means reduce a problem down to its most simplest components. Don't stick, don't sit in the details. Look to get down to the most basic level. Uh, and, I, and I've watched too often where, and I've been guilty of it as well, of you know, getting, getting lost in the details and, and not realizing that you need to simplify things to the most basic level. So what does this mean? There's three, th I, I like bullet points that sort of roll in one by one. Um, what does this mean? I think there's three really important points, I think, that Geospatial Next and what, what this means. It means that focusing on current users of geospatial data and technology is important. I, I've, I've, back in my past, I always thought, well, let's bring geospatial technology to those that don't know it. You know, let's bring it into the commercial world, which people are, and they're successfully doing that. But it's a harder challenge. It's an easier challenge than look, thinking about Occam's Razor to bring technology to those folks that use it and get it and to broaden its use. So I think that's really the, the target, a very important focus. And I think it's really important to find champions within organisations, but these are either champions at the leadership level or connected to leadership because nothing changes unless you've got the buy-in from the folks that uh, actually run the businesses. So it's really important to find those champions. It, these are obvious points, but the adoption of, of geospatial next requires those first two pieces. And, and the, the last, the third piece that, I, that I'll talk about here is I think it's really important to build a geospatial next strategy and execution. Being very much a focus of me, what I've been thinking about and noodling on for quite a few number of years now. So those are three important points, I think, about what all this means. 
So what is my next talk going to be about? And, and, and the ones after that. I'm going to really focus some time on thinking about and talking about what, what actually a geospatial mix strategy looks like. And most importantly, how you execute that strategy. So the plan of execution. And I'll show you some frameworks and some approaches that uh, I believe are, uh, will help take the Occam's razor approach to this and simplify the evolution and the, and the um, growth and adoption uh, of geospatial data and technology. So that's our Friday talk. Uh, thanks for watching. I may see you at the, the Ezra UC. Excited to see uh, some folks that I haven't seen for a long time there. Um, I'm excited to see all of the new technologies that Esri have been rolling out and uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So uh, look forward to doing another talk very soon and uh, have a lovely week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on the Geospatial Next channel. We're focused here on understanding the future of geospatial. That's both how we get to mainstream adoption of the technology and data and how we start using blockchain and crypto to move things forward. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you next time.